What's up, everybody? This is Maximilian, and I kind of told you guys we were going to go into uh, Dark Cave today. Well, you know what? I, I lied. Uh, it's been a while since I played this game, obviously, so I'm not terribly familiar with the whole memorization of next locations and sequence and such. So I kind of made the, uh, the amateur mistake of not looking things up beforehand, and so I just kind of went there anyway because it just happened to be there, so I figured this must obviously be our next step. Little did I know that if I ventured a little bit farther west into Violet City, I would have noticed that there was another route over there. Oops. That's okay. I mean, it doesn't hurt entirely to come in here because you can always catch some otherwise interesting Pokemon. Like, I guess Geodude doesn't really count because he's not that great, particularly since that you're uh, already done with Falconer. Although, since the next two gym leaders are Bug and Normal, I guess he would be okay, but I'm not a huge fan of Geodude, so I never really bothered with it. Plus, there's Zubats in this cave as well, which means I'm probably more than likely going to stay away from it. So, just a heads up, you're going to find some Zubats if you do happen to venture in here. Really, the only thing you can do is go up through this first set of ledges and grab the potion that's laying on the ground, and that's about it. You can't really advance any farther through Dark Cave unless you have a Pokemon that knows Rock Smash, which is an HM that you'll get later. Or a Surf, which is also an HM in this game that you'll get later. So just grab the potion and head on out. If you want, level grind a little bit like I did here. I'm still kind of in my let's battle everything mode. But I'm going to try and stray away from that since it's kind of getting to the point in the game where we really need to be focusing on actually progressing as opposed to just fighting everything that we run into. So, yeah. Just throwing that out there. So actually what we're going to do for the pretty much the entirety of this episode is just... Going from uh, Violet to, I believe it's called Azalea City. I, or no, ah, uh, crap. Uh, what's it called? I want to say it's Azalea Town. Please forgive me if I'm wrong there. I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. I'm not entirely sure. I know I looked it up at one point, and I had it stuck in my head. Okay, this is where we're going. This is definitely right, based on previous experiences. But um, there may come a point where I mix up some of the names of the towns in here just because there are twice as many to remember. So please forgive me in advance if that happens. But basically, the only thing that's really going on in this episode is just us battling through trainers on the way over there, because there's actually quite a bit. And um, there's also several that you can get phone numbers for, which is always great, because battling people over and over again is great for level grinding. And it's just awesome in general, since you don't have a limited number of trainers strictly limited as you did in Red and Blue. It's awesome. So I'm just going to fight with Pokemon this episode. And now that we've gotten that out of the way, there's not really much else to talk about in terms of gameplay. So let's just address a couple of other things, like personal life. What have I been doing lately? Well, I am almost done. Almost. I stress that word, almost. Done with my semester here abroad in Hong Kong. I've got about a month left before I head back to the States. I think my exams are actually over about a week or a week and a half before I actually leave. So I'm going to have some time to maybe like bonk around and explore a little more. I'm thinking about making, maybe taking a trip to Korea, possibly Japan. It's like a very, uh, very out there idea, considering that they had the earthquake and tsunami and the radiation and everything else. Japan's just a mess right now. Although apparently the U.S. government declared Tokyo safe for travel a little while ago. I'm not entirely sure. I'll look into that. But I may be taking one more trip tops, and that will be it. And then I'll be heading back to the good old U.S. of A. It's kind of interesting when you... Um, when you've been away from home for this long, you kind of have mixed feelings because it's like um, it's like you're in a different world, so you're experiencing something completely new. But at the same time, after you've been gone for so long, you kind of miss the things that you once took for granted. Like, um, I really miss having, like, milk every day because, like, I drink milk a lot. I have it in cereal and everything. It's just something that I'm used to. It's like a staple in the American diet. Whereas um, here in Hong Kong and pretty much Asia in general... Uh, milk isn't nearly quite as ubiquitous as it is in the States. And that's because, um, at least from what I have heard, that um, Asian people have... Um, the gene has a bit of a, a natural tendency towards lactose intolerance. So milk, if it's ever found here, usually isn't, usually isn't very common, block. <laughs> Mostly um, any milk products here are soy. So it's just it's just not the same thing. Like, if you've ever had soy milk, you, you'll know, like, it's kind of similar in terms of texture and consistency, but it's it just doesn't taste the same. It's it's not the same as regular milk. I love having my uh, skim milk every day with my dinner, with my cereal, everything. 
So that's one thing that I'm kind of missing. And I'm also missing Chipotle a lot. If you guys don't have Chipotle where you live, you need to go move to a state that has one or take a vacation just so you can get some because it's like the best food on the face of the earth. I mean, it's simple Baja Mexican food to go, but it's there's just something about it that's great. The fact that it's fresh and it's always it's always different. There's so much variety there. I miss these simple things that I guess I could, like, you know, figure you could live without in the States, but once you've been without them, knowing that you don't have access to those for several months, you start to realize how much you miss them and how much you enjoy them. But then again, there's also some things here that I kind of wish I had back in the States, like um, public transit is really big here in Hong Kong because it's a massive city, but it's really, really tiny. So you got to have an efficient transportation system to get everybody where they need to go. The mass transit system here is among the best in the world from what I have heard and I would totally agree with that like I can't say from experience because I actually haven't been on other subways but their subways and their bus systems are very clean they're very inexpensive and they're well maintained and very efficient they operate very quickly and they're just an amazing experience just to be able to have that at your disposal it's a really great tool to have and you kind of wish you'd have that back in the states especially now that gas is upwards of four dollars a gallon which is not cheap by any stretch. And it's not like gas is any cheaper here. I'm pretty sure they're paying more for gas here than we are in the States, but that's also because virtually nobody drives here in Hong Kong. Like, you'll see cars in the streets all the time, but for the most part, the cars are taxis, and if you do own a car here in Hong Kong, you're pretty much so well off anyway that the gas doesn't even matter. Because the import tax on... I think it's... I think it may just be on anything. I know it applies to automobiles. But the import tax here is 100%. So let's say you're buying a $25,000 Toyota or whatever that is imported from Japan and not manufactured in China. Then you'd be paying $50,000 for a $25,000 car. It's a ton of money for to get any kind of automobile here. Plus parking is just insanely expensive. Like if you ever thought a New York parking space was rough or New York cost of living was rough, you need to check Hong Kong. I think they may have actually surpassed New York City for the most expensive rental property in the world, or at least in terms of square footage. People will literally work their entire lives here in Hong Kong and still not have paid off the flat or apartment that they originally purchased when they started working. It's insanely expensive to live in Hong Kong. So that's a, another thing that I like. I do enjoy the public transit system, but I don't really enjoy the fact that it's so expensive to live here, at least, um, at least for the other people, and I miss wide open space. Because I'm not used to the urban lifestyle. I live in suburbia back at home. So wide open space comes naturally to me. Whereas when you've been like stuck in the giant metropolis of a 7 million person city like Hong Kong, you feel like you're kind of trapped, like claustrophobic almost all the time. Because you're always surrounded by these massive skyscrapers. Everywhere you go, there's just dozens in every direction. So it's just a completely new change of environment. So it's kind of like a culture shock. At least when I first got here, it was. I wasn't sure what to expect, and it just kind of took me by surprise. But I've been slowly adjusting to it over the last few months. I've been here since late January, so I've been getting used to it. But I do say that I'm definitely ready to go back to the States. I, I miss my family. I miss my friends that I have back home. And I really want to drive a car again. I don't know why, but I've been getting the itch to just drive something. Just because I, I'm used to having that ability whenever I need to do it back at home. And it's just kind of something, you know, oh, I guess I'll drive today. Like, if I need to go somewhere, like a friend's house or get groceries or something, it's no big deal. It's just something that we're used to. But here, when you you don't have access to a car and you have to rely on public transit, I don't, you just kind of feel like you're, uh, you're dependent. I just want to get back in the wheel of a car and feel like I'm in control again, you know? That's just my opinion anyway. But yeah, I will be back in the States in about a month, and I'll be working at a summer internship. So I'll be fairly busy over the summer. However, I'm going to still be bringing out the content for these uh, for this walkthrough on a hopefully regular basis. Probably something like every two days or every three days, something like that. Basically, the pace that I've been keeping for the time being. Now, granted, like when I first get back, I have like one weekend from the time when I get back until I actually start my internship because I'm actually getting back much later in the summer since... Um, semesters here in Hong Kong start and end much later than the American semesters so I'm kind of crunched for time in terms of internship so I may take like a few days off just because I need to spend some time with my family they haven't seen me in almost four months so I'm going to I may take a day or two off there I'm not like saying like it's a complete impossibility that I'll post something between then however 
I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to throw that out there that I may just want to, you know, s s relax, take it easy, spend some time with family, but I'll get back on schedule afterwards, so don't worry about that. I will most definitely be keeping up with this walkthrough, because I know you guys want to see Pokemon, so I'm going to bring you some Pokemon, don't worry. Max has got you covered. So, Magikarp. I wasn't exactly expecting a fifth, level 15 Magikarp this early in the game, but uh, if you know anything about Magikarp, they suck. And even if a level 15 Magikarp is much higher level than my Totodile, its tackle is still going to do nothing. So, it may catch you uh, like by surprise if you happen to battle a random trainer like this, but don't worry, you'll, you'll be perfectly fine. Especially since your Pokemon are much higher quality than any of the other ones you're going to encounter for at least the next few gems in the game. You are by far well ahead of the competition. But there's another thing you have to watch out for in this game. Like, don't judge a book by its cover, I guess, would be the proper idiom here. Because um, unlike Red and Blue, where the trainers, I think, essentially had the same level for every Pokemon, unless they were a gym leader or a special trainer, uh, in this game, um, excuse me, every trainer's Pokemon's level will vary depending on which ones they have and uh, where they are in the game. So, like, if they have more Pokemon, their levels will tend to be lower, but sometimes they'll fluctuate. Like, they'll have one that's a significantly higher level than the others. So that's just something you need to be prepared for. Like, if all of a sudden their Pokemon jumps up by four or five levels the next one they throw out, just don't be entirely surprised by it. And it's not like they're going to overwhelm you with the, uh, the sheer amount of level gap that they have, but it's just something to be looking out for. There's a lot more dynamics that you have to be aware of in Silver, so it's, it makes it a slightly more challenging game, at least in terms of progressing through it and fighting the Pokemon, since there's a lot more things you have to consider. But in terms of actually fighting raw power on raw power, it's definitely easier than Red and Blue, just because you don't have to continuously level grind in order to keep up with the gym leaders that you're going to be coming into. That and there's a severe shortage of trainers in between each one, you don't have nearly enough to actually properly level grind yourself in between each gym. So that's something also to think about. I just not really think about, just appreciate. Appreciate the fact that they made it slightly easier for you to go through this game. But, on the next few episodes, I think... I could be wrong, because I'm not sure if there's like a little, um... If we go on to the little Team Rocket subplot tangent here. Because, um... Team Rocket just kind of happened to be there in red. It's kind of like it was um, it was almost synonymous with the main plot just because every time you were progressing along with the main plot, Rockets just happened to be there. Whereas in Gold and Silver, they're more like a, they're more like a side quest almost if you've ever played an RPG because they're not technically something you need to be doing to get to most gyms, but you're going to end up running into them anyway. So they're kind of like a, a speed bump in your way, if you will. You'll notice that they uh, they play on the rocket theme a lot more prominently in this game. And in some of the cases, it's actually a bit more challenging, kind of like um, almost semi-puzzles, I guess? Not entirely. I'm not entirely sure how to describe it. But yeah, rockets will definitely be coming up in at least the next few episodes. I can't remember exactly when, but they will be happening, so just take my word for it on that. There's a lot of stuff coming up in this game, so I may get some predictions wrong, kind of like I did with the Dark Cave. But that is kind of to be expected, especially considering I haven't played the game in 10 years now. I haven't got this quite memorized as well as I have Red and Blue. Red and Blue I know by heart. It's like the back of my palm, because I've, I've played it so many times, whereas Silver, I think, I've, oh, I think I've only played Silver like twice. And I don't even think the second time was a complete playthrough. I've only really actually played the entire game through once. So I'm not as familiar with it as I am with Red and Blue. But I'm going to try my best to stay ahead. If that means researching the topic beforehand, I'll go ahead and do that. Because I want to get my facts straight. I don't want to, like, say anything stupid. Like, we're, um, we're going to be running into, like, a super-duper hard fire-type gym leader in Next City. Because we're definitely not. Uh, sh I can't... I don't think I actually, actually remember the gym leaders for Johto by heart, at least in order. I know the last two are Ice and Dragon type. The next two are going to be Bug and Normal. I can't remember what happens in the middle exactly, but I know that there's a steel type one in there somewhere. I think it, it maybe it's the sixth. I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to find out. Don't worry, we'll find out. We will get there eventually, all in due time. This is probably going to take, at least from what I'd roughly estimate, twice as many episodes, if not more, than Red and Blue. 
So they're going to be like much shorter income rents, or at least they're going to seem like that because we're not making as much percentage progress as we would be in red and blue. We're not progressing through larger chunks of the game. However, we're still getting somewhere considering playing the game for 15 minutes straight on a double emulator speed will actually still get you somewhere. But since there's so much more to accomplish, it's going to give the illusion that we're not actually getting stuff done. But yeah, we're going to heal up our Pokemon here. We'll stop for now, and then we'll pick it up next episode when, possibly, we'll run into Team Rocket. I could... Team Rocket? Blah. Excuse me. I could be wrong, but then again, we're going to find out. Surprises and adventures to come. I'll see you guys later. Bye.